Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. A very warm welcome to the Advanced Audit and Assurance Webinar to Success Day 2. And I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. And these webinars are for exams in September 2022. Now we have a very important agenda on hold today. Uh, and just want to put that in front of your screen before proceeding further. Now yesterday, being the very first day, uh, I focused on the new developments which has taken place in the AAA paper ahead of the September 22 exams. Uh, I did focus on how you can boost your 20 professional marks in the AAA paper. We had a discussion on the time management, student number one versus the student number two, and then the right study planner, which you should follow in the last 14 days ahead of your exams. Now, today is the second day and I will be investigating the September 22 mock exam. And on the day two today, day three and day four, the focus is on the September 22 mock exam. The question number one comes today and then the two and three comes on the day three and day four. Uh, I will give you lots of insights about the mock exam. Uh, we do lots of discussions around the topics, marking scheme, how to write, the do's and don'ts, and we'll be giving you lots of tips and techniques around each question from an examination perspective. So let's start the journey. Let's start the day two, and let's take a focus on the very first question of the September 22 mock exam, which is available on the practice platform. So welcome to the day two of the webinar to success for advanced audit and assurance for September 22 exams. Now let's start with a look inside the question number one of the mock exam before I just take you to the practice platform and we start uh, investigating the question carefully. Now, first of all, we know that the first question uh, in the mock exam for September 22 focused on the audit risk procedures and a current issue. More importantly, uh, there is a new statement which you all must have seen by now. Uh, this is a new statement on materiality which is now published in the partner email, the partner email to the manager. And this statement was available in the specimen exam for September 22. Then it was in the three practice exams for September 22 and now in the mock exam as well. So I will be investigating this statement on materiality, which is now given in the partner email and what exactly you have to do with this statement on materiality by the partner and how would you be reflecting that in your answer. Secondly, the 10 professional marks we have in the first question, including the communication skill. How would you be getting most of the 10 professional marks inside the question number one and changes in the marking scheme? Are there any changes? Uh, I need to be very clear on that today and I need to bring the clarification on that today exactly what the changes are because again there are a lot of misconceptions uh, among the students uh, asking for clarity uh, for the marking scheme. So that's where the question one would come in today. Uh, we'll be focusing on drafting, reading, planning, writing. We'll be focusing on materiality, we'll be focusing on professional marks We'll be focusing on the marking scheme as well for the very first question. So let's start investigating the very first question and we'll keep coming back to the presentation and keep going to the practice platform. So I'll, I'll just keep popping in and popping out of the platform to my presentation and from my presentation to the platform till the time we complete the very first question. So let's start uh, looking at the practice platform. I hope you can see the practice platform on your screen now. Please confirm that. You can see the mock exam for September 22 right here. I hope you can clear, you can be assured of that, all of you. Please confirm. Okay, great. Now let's start this uh, exam and let's start looking at this situation. And I will be drilling it and will be giving you lots of benefit, uh, beneficial tips and techniques. So you need to note them down very carefully. Now I'll be putting my camera off uh, for a certain time so that you can see the screen 
effectively and nothing gets distorted on the screen. So wherever my camera is needed, I'll put it on because you can uh, you can hear me. Uh, so I'm just putting my camera off so we can do a very proper analysis of the question number one in this mock exam. Okay, let's start the journey. Now, whenever you open the very first question in exam hall, we did discuss the time management yesterday, 195 minutes, and you have 80 technical marks to go with. Now, if you are a student number one, as per the time management discussed yesterday, you will have 24 minutes of a reading and planning time. And if you are a student two, as per the time management discussed yesterday, you will have 20 minutes uh for reading and planning the very first question now considering i'm the student one looking at 24 minutes of a reading and planning time where i can see a main screen giving me uh the information about the uh case study and then on the left panel i can see the exhibits the requirements and the response options now because you practice at home before you get to the actual exam so you exactly know the interface you exactly know what you will be opening first and what you will not be opening. Uh, where are the requirements? For which exhibit you need to open for requirement? What you need to read first? What you need to read second? That order and that pattern must be set at home. So that pattern is to be set and that's very critical because you cannot go in the exam hall and on the 5th of September, you decide what to open first and what to close which window to open, which window not to open. Now that will be that will really affect your time management. So you should be assured what you will be doing first. Now, very firstly, you know that everything you need to write is you need to write it on a briefing note. So you will open up your response option window and you keep your response option window open on the right hand side of your screen. And before you start writing anything on your response option window. Let's read the main screen in front of us because that reading will just take one minute. So out of the 24 minutes, the very first minute will be utilized reading this particular screen over here, this screen, just one minute. Now this screen all, uh, will tell us it is the 1st of July. So we are standing at the planning stage. You are a manager. We always are a manager in the in the AAA paper, and we are the audit manager for the Dumont company, which is the audit firm. And you are assigned to the audit of the Bransfield company. So the name of our company, which we are auditing, is the Bransfield company, and they have an year end of 30th of September. Year end is important, 30th of September, because there could be lots of events given in the question number one where you need to decide whether it is an adjusting event or a non-adjusting event. There might be an application of IS-10, uh, not necessarily it's in every question, but sometime you need to judge whether this event took place before the balance sheet date or after. So you should know the year in, which is an important information. Your firm has been responsible for the audit of Bransfield for the last four years. So it's not a new client. You are doing audit of this company for the last four years. That means you have lots of knowledge. Then the examiner tells us there are four exhibits given on the left hand side of the screen. The first exhibit we always know is a partner email. The second exhibit we always know is a business background where most of the risk will come from. The third exhibit in most of the AAA scenarios is the financial statement. And the fourth, I even discussed yesterday that the fourth is a particular exhibit uh, where the examiner wants you to do something important. Always in the triple exam, in the question number one, the fourth exhibit or the fifth exhibit, whichever is the last one. Over here, the last one is the fourth. So see the last one is giving us something about the climate related risk. So always be very particular about the last exhibit because the last exhibit would be something very special where the examiner will keep a certain requirement in the email. And the first three exhibits will always be the partner email, the background information, the financial statement. Yes, the last exhibit will be something special and the examiner would like to draw an attention to something very important uh, in, uh, in a sort of a requirement in the partner email. And that here is the climate related risk. Now this screen, which I read 
is just one minute of your exam time. Even if when you read at home, you can imagine you're just taking one minute here. Now, I just need to open up my briefing note before I start answering my question. I'll write over here my rough working and I, I'll just delete this rough working after I complete my answer. And in the rough working, I'll just write uh, the year end of the company. The year end is 30th of September. So I exactly know uh, if I need to incorporate some adjusting and non-adjusting events. And this is the fourth year since audit firm is auditing, since the audit firm is doing audit. So for me, this is the two critical informations, rough working. And I'll delete this rough working once I complete up my answer in exam. Okay, I'll go now and open the partner email because the partner email is the first exhibit which you should open because this will tell you that you need what you need to do. So you open up the partner email and you structure the partner email on your screen and you look at the partner email. What exactly is the partner telling you in the email? So let's read the partner email. Now I, I on the briefing note, I will write answer to question number one, answer to question one. So examiner knows that from this point onwards, I'm starting to write my answer. I can just underline it. And I know that the, I need to answer the question number one in the format of a briefing note. So I'll immediately put the heading briefing note because that's something uh, assumed and that's something you are mentally ready for when you're preparing yourself for the AAA paper. So briefing note. Now let's read what's in the briefing note. To the audit manager from Finn Drake, the audit partner, subject audit planning for Bransfield, date 1st of July. Now I know when I start my briefing note, I need to start my briefing note exactly the same, to, from, date, subject. Now I exactly copy this because it's an email from the partner to the manager. So I copy this, control C, I bring it under my briefing note here, control V. Now to, from subject and date. This is exactly what you're doing under the reading and planning time, right? You're structuring. Now, because it was an email from the partner to the manager, now I am writing back. I am a manager and I'm responding back to the email in a form of a briefing note. So the from will become the to and the to will become the from. So I'll just copy the from Fintrake and I copy the from into two, I copy the from into two and I cut the two into the from. So I just swap, I swap the two and from. So two becomes the partner now, from becomes the manager. So I've just swapped the positions of two and from. So it's to the fin drake from the manager, subject remains the same, date remains the same. So you're writing this email back on the 1st of July. Now we know in the briefing note, you need to write the introduction. We'll write the introduction shortly. And after the introduction, you need to do what the examiner is asking you. And at the end of the briefing note, you need to have a conclusion. So at least you can set this briefing note before even starting to read the requirements of the partner email. So copy the, copy the header of the partner email to from subject date. Just swap the position of to and from because you're writing back to the partner and you are structured your briefing note within just one to two minutes. Now let's read the partner email and let's see what the partner wants me to do. The partner says, hello, I have provided you with some information in the form of the number of exhibits, which you would use with the planning of the audit of the Bransfield company for the financial year ending 30th of September. Based on the analysis I have done on this industry, it is appropriate for the overall materiality to be based on the profitability of the company. Now, this is the statement I was talking about. This statement has started to come from the specimen exam for September 22. And this particular statement has become extremely important uh, when you're preparing yourself for the September exam. It is appropriate for the overall materiality to be based on the profitability of the company. So the partner is telling me that you have to base the materiality on the profitability, not on the total assets, not on the revenue in the question number one, because the partner believe that that is more appropriate. So you need to base your materiality 
on the profitability and you need to tell the partner that this is my conclusion of materiality because we know there is a range of profitability, five to 10% of the profit. So which materiality will you decide? 5% of the profit, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, because there is a threshold, five to 10% of the profit, profit after tax. So we need to be sure, sorry, profit before tax. So we need to be sure which percentage are you taking? So I'll, I'll just tell you what you need to do with the statement. So the partner is telling us it is appropriate for the materiality to be based on profitability of the company. I just copy the statement and put that down under my introduction because these are important statements I need to remember. So I just copy these statements, which I need to remember when I start writing my answer. This is what I am doing under the reading and planning time. So in the reading and planning time, I'm just copying something which is important. Okay, second, I require you to prepare a briefing note. I've already started making that. Number A, using the information provided in the exhibit one, two, three, not four. So will you be making use of the exhibit four? No, you will only be using the exhibit one, two, three. So you need to find the audit risk from the three exhibits, not from the fourth one. There will, there will not be any audit risk in the fourth one because the examiner is saying exhibit one, two, three, you will be wasting time reading the fourth exhibit for the audit risk. So th the first requirement, what the examiner wants me to do is to evaluate the significant audit risk, evaluate significant audit risk. That's the first requirement. And how many marks have been given for that? 23 marks. So I'll do a planning how many risk I need to write a requirement. Examiner is also telling me in a note number here which I was mentioning on my day one yesterday, that you need to look at the sign post. Now, this is a sign post note. You are not required to consider the deferred tax consequences of the share based payment scheme. So you're not considering the deferred tax consequences of the share based payment scheme. If you are, you are going against the instructions of the partner. And if you're going against the instructions of the partner, you are losing the communication skill marks because the partner is saying, I would not like to see any deferred tax consequences of the share based payment. So when you are evaluating the share based payment, you will not be considering any deferred tax consequences of that. Otherwise it will be inappropriate and you will be going against the instruction of the partner. So be very watchful of the notes, be very watchful of the signpost. I did mention that on my day one of the webinar. So we have total 23 marks and we should not be focusing on the deferred tax consequences. In the B requirement, you need to design the procedures in the B requirement, which is very typical in the very, in the very first question and procedures on the share based payment expense, number one, and procedures on the deferred tax asset. So we need to make procedures on the deferred tax asset and we need to make procedures for share based payment expense and we total have nine marks. So it's up to you how many procedures you want to make for share based payment and how many procedures you want to make for deferred tax. You can make more for one, less for the other, but in total nine procedures. Procedures, and I have to make procedures on share based payments, share based payments, and I have to make procedures for the deferred tax asset. So in total, how many marks I have for procedures? Nine marks. So in total, I have to make nine procedures. Now it's up to you for which you want to make more and for which you want to make less. But total has to be nine. Okay, let's go to the C requirement. Now the examiner tells us using the information in exhibit four. So for the C requirement, you are not looking at any other exhibit. You're only looking at the fourth exhibit for the C requirement. And you have to discuss how climate related risk should be considered by the audit team during the audit of the brands field company. So we have to consider how the climate related risk would be affecting our upcoming audit and how I will be considering that as an audit team. You are not required. See, again, this is a signpost and an exam. We are in so hurry that we overlook not and our answer becomes wrong and we are losing the communication marks. If something is if something is mentioned that you should not do this and you are doing it, you are losing your communication marks. So examiner is saying you are not required to consider the impact 
of the climate related risk on the audit report. So you're not considering any impacts of the climate related risk on the audit report. Apart from that, you can consider any other thing for climate related risk on the planning and performance of the audit. So examiner is more interested to know how the climate related risk would impact the planning and performance of the upcoming audit as simple as that for eight marks. So climate related risk, climate related risk and its impact on planning and performing audit. Planning and performing audit, that's what I need to do in the last part eight. And for the safety, I can just write that the entire information here will come from exhibit four. And for the question number one, evaluate the significant risk, I can just write in the bracket that the information will come from exhibit one, two, and three. Now I've read the partner email. I'm closing the partner email. Now see, I'm ready. It just, this exercise uh, up till now, realistically should take not more than six to seven minutes, including the very first minute you spend reading the screen on the right. Now out of the 24 minutes, approximately six to seven minutes must have been gone. You're remaining with another 17 minutes in which you have to read through the exhibit two, three, and four. Now, just before that, listen to me very carefully. I hope you are very clear with the rough working I put at the top, which I will delete at the end of my answer. Year end is 30th of September, and you know the purpose why I put it down. Fourth year, since the audit form is doing audit, I will be giving you relevance why I put that down in my rough working. Sometime we come across the question number one, which says it's a new audit line, right? Some across, sometime we come across uh, in the question number one, this is a recurring audit. We are doing it for the last many years. And that information is helpful in certain context. Then I start my answer to question number one. I put the heading briefing note to, from, I, I swap the position of to and from, from the partner email. Subject remains the same, date remains the same. I need to write the introduction of the briefing note still. And the briefing note has to end with a conclusion. So that's two things you have to fill up. Then in the A part, you're doing significant audit risk for 23 marks. In the B part, you're doing procedures for nine marks on share based payment and defrotex asset. And in the C part, you're looking at how the climate related risk would impact the planning and performance of the audit eight marks and from the exhibit four only. There were two signposts. One signpost was we are not considering the defrotex consequences of the share based payment. And the second signpost was that we are not considering the climate related risk impact on the audit report. I hope you remember that. Now, considering that you're ready for the start to read the exhibits. Now, first of all, examiner is telling us that you need to base the materiality on the profitability number, right? So where will be the profitability? Where, where will be the profitability? The profitability will be in the exhibit number three, which is the financial information. So I immediately open the financial information and I look at the profitability of the company. Okay, we have profit before tax right here. I hope you can see the profit before tax number here. 145 million for the current year for which I am doing the audit. Projected September 20X5. 145 million is the profit number. So that is where I need to base my profitability, my sorry, materiality at. So $145 million is the profitability number from the exhibit number three. So it is appropriate for the materiality to be based on the profitability of the company. Uh, the profit before tax is $145 million. So I copied this information from the exhibit three. So I know that my materiality is to be based on $145 million. I'll take the percentage of this 5 to 10 percent shortly. Okay. Now, firstly, let's write the introduction quickly. Whenever you are writing the introduction of a briefing note, the introduction is what you need to do. What is the objective? So I quickly write my introduction in two sentences like this. The purpose of writing this briefing note, the purpose of writing this briefing note is to evaluate the significant uh, audit risk in planning the upcoming audit of the brand's field company. Full stop. Further, 
this brief further this note also consider audit procedures audit procedures on share based payment and defer tax asset and defer tax asset and also how the climate related risk would affect the planning and performance of the upcoming audit that is it two sentences and in two sentences you are telling what is the purpose of writing this briefing note so i wrote my introduction now i know that after the introduction the partner wants me to base my materiality on profitability and then the partner wants me to do a b c and write a conclusion so conclusion again will just be two sentences which i will tell you how to write a conclusion now you know that the first question consists of 10 professional marks where are the 10 professional marks it's in the requirements if you open the requirements the requirement will tell you professional marks will be awarded for demonstration now this is something you already know in the exam so you're not opening the requirements because this is something you must have practiced back at home so you're not wasting time opening the requirements you know by default that the first question consists of the 10 professional marks and they are to be awarded for the demonstration of communication analysis and evaluation professional skepticism and commercial acumen so this is something you know so it's waste of time that you're opening requirements and looking at them because you've already seen the partner email for what you need to do and you already know there are 10 marks communication skill is important in the first question because that's not available in the other questions of the AAA paper and that's where we are putting the briefing note in focus okay let's start the first proceeding now try to understand this new statement by the examiner on materiality how will this be impacting your upcoming exams and how many marks you will be getting for this now i will do an analysis on my word file and i'll come back to the practice platform writing up the answer so i'm just taking this uh briefing note introduction and everything on my word file for a minute and i'll come back discussing reading the exhibits so just you need to wait for 10 minutes before i come back to the practice platform i hope you can all see the word file in front of your screen please confirm that which will be shared with all of you okay great now on my word file we are writing the answer we are doing the question number one from the september 22 mock exam and i'm just putting up what i put on the practice platform to from subject date we got an introduction and under the introduction the partner told us that the materiality is to be based on profit then we have to evaluate the significant risk procedures procedures on two areas and then we had the climate related risk and discussion and finally our conclusion so this is how things are looking like okay now let's understand the first thing when the partner is telling you that the materiality is to be based on profit this is a new statement and i hope you have got clarity on this by now but i want to refine it for the sake of your upcoming exams now under the introduction under the introduction you will write a heading materiality like this you will write a heading materiality before you start abc before you start abc now the exam the partner wants it to be based on materiality how much is the materiality 145 million dollar 145 million dollar now you pick up the 145 million dollar materiality and you start to write a statement here now listen to me very carefully when i'm writing this statement and if you have any questions i'll take them after five minutes on this particular statement now how are you writing this answer you are saying the materiality is to be based on profit before tax for the materiality is to be based on the profit before tax of the brands field company
on the range of materiality, on the range of materiality for the profit before tax, that is 5 to 10 percent, 5 percent to 10 percent. The lower end and the higher end, the lower end and the higher end of the materiality is, and you calculate it, materiality is, open the bracket, $1.145 million, $1.145 million into 5% and 10% is equal to dollar 7.25 million dash dollar 14.5 million so you're you're telling examiner that based upon the lower threshold and the higher threshold 5 to 10 percent the materiality is 7.25 million dollar to 14.5 million dollar now that's the range of materiality now look at this statement so you found the range of materiality on the profit five to 10%. So you found the 5% at 7.25 million and you found the 10% at 14.5 million. Now that's the range in which you need to find the materiality for Bransfield Company. Now look at my justification. Now if any student put a full stop at 7.25 million to 14.15 million, you are just fetching your technical marks because you're not justifying which number will you be using for Bransfield? Will you be using 7.25 million? Will you be using 9 million, 10 million, 11 million, 12 million? Which figure? You already got the range, but have you tell examiner which value will you be using out of the range? If you just put a full stop here, you're just fetching your one technical mark for materiality. You're not fetching the professional marks you're not fetching the marks for your judgment here till the time you give the basis. Now look at my basis. Being an existing client, being an existing client, being an existing client for the last four years, the materiality should not be set, should not be set at the lowest level because, see my because, the audit firm has accumulated, the audit firm has accumulated knowledge of business. This is not the first year audit, right? They have accumulated knowledge of the business and its system. They know the company, right, for the last four years. So it should ideally not be set at the lowest level, which is 7.25 million. However, considering, however, considering there are changes. Now, when you read the exhibit number two, where you, where you have been given a background information. Now, in the background information, there are plenty of risk uh, which have arose during the year. And when you look at the financial statements in the exhibit number three, you will see that there have been lots of increase and decrease in the financial statement numbers. Now, looking at that, I'm just evaluating something. However, considering there are changes uh, in the financial statements, which I saw in the exhibit number three, however, considering there are changes in the financial statements and number of risk, and number of risk specific to the upcoming audit, However, considering there are a number of changes in the financial statement and number of risks specific to the upcoming audit, the materiality level should be selected between the low and the high end. Thus, I cannot select the low because it's not the first year audit, right? But it has to be selected somewhere between the low and high. So the materiality level should be selected between the low and the high end. Thus, a materiality level of dollar ten point one five million is appropriate 
bracket being 7% of the profit before tax. So I didn't took 5% of the profit before tax because it was not the first year audit. I even didn't took the 10% of the profit before tax because that must have been very, that must have been very high considering there are lots of changes in the financial statement and lots of specific risk given by the examiner. So I've just choosed 7%, keeping it in between the low and the high end and look at my basis, look at my basis, see. I hope you're all clear with that. Look at this base here, being an existing client, number one. Then I'm saying, however, then I'm saying, because, look at these statements. I, I tried building my grounds that I'm not choosing the lowest level. I, I justified myself. I'm not choosing the highest level. I justified myself. I, I thought about the changes in the financial statement. I thought about the changes in the risk given in the exhibit number two. And then I concluded that it's better to keep it somewhere in between five and 10% and I choose seven. Now I'll be using this as a threshold for materiality right across my answer, wherever I has to judge something is material or something is not material. Now I will fetch one mark here, which is technical because I determined the materiality level, but I will also fetch at least one mark for exercising judgment, for exercising judgment, full stop. This is, this is my professional mark. At least minimum, minimum one professional mark will come out of it. Look at this. Are you all clear with this? Do you have any questions so far and so forth? Yes, it is mentioned Rahul in the question that we need to calculate materiality on the profit basis, right? So that's the reason we are calculating it on the profit basis. Apart from that, any other question on the drafting I've done so far? Uh, you have two minutes to raise any questions before I move on and get to the next element. If it is the first year audit, then you will keep it at the lowest level, 5%. Uh, Hanan, it's very difficult to say there are no changes in financial statements. Uh, that's it's like unrealistic. Uh, do, do you believe from the last year to the current year, the business keeps static? Honestly, tell me, Hanan, do you believe business keeps static from uh, over the last year? In the last 12 months, there will be no changes in sales, profit, expenses. So I think that's that's quite an unrealistic statement, right? Uh, Rahul, I justified 10 point, uh, 10.15 million because I took it between the high and the low ends. What is the low end, Rahul? The low end is 5%, right? What is the high end? 10. So I, I took it between that. Look at my statement here, between. I, I don't want to keep it low. I don't want to keep it high. Rahul, why I didn't took the low? Because it's not the first year audit. Why I didn't took the high? Why I didn't took the high? because there were number of risk. There were number of changes. So I have to take something in the middle. So I, I decided the middle is 7%. Yes, that is also fine. But see the materiality threshold, the tan, tanjil, the materiality threshold has to be an even number, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%. You cannot say, I will take 7.5%. No, not at all. The materiality numbers have to be even numbers, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that clear, Tan Tanjul? Yes, if you just calculate the materiality and you don't give the basis, you will fetch only one mark. You will not be fetching the professional marks then, right? Yes, whatever you are writing so far, you're fetching marks, right? You're already fetched marks for materiality. You've already fetched your marks for uh, putting the format of the briefing note, right? Yes, uh, now see, these are assumptions. Uh, there is no end of the assumptions. If you're auditing a client for last 10 years, for last nine years, uh, still there will be changes in the financial statement, right? Suppose you were auditing the Bransfield company for last eight years. 
and there were changes in the financial statement. There were risks given by the examiner in the case study. Then I would I would have taken like eight uh, percent, nine percent. I would have increased from seven. But so this is the fourth year audit. So I I tried to be a bit more skeptical, not keeping it high, not keeping it low, somewhere in the middle. But I tried justifying myself. Whatever materiality level you decide should be justified. No, you cannot take odd numbers, seven and a half, eight and a half, right? Never. Materiality is five to ten percent of the profit. So it has to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now just stop your questions and uh, uh, answer my question. If it is the first year audit, will you keep the materiality level uh, at uh, which level of materiality will you choose? If it is a first year audit, tell me five to ten percent. Which percentage will you use? Five percent, seven point two five million. Wonderful. If it is like uh, the eighth year audit, ninth year audit, tenth year audit, will you will you go straight away to ten percent, or you will still be taking somewhere like eight or nine? Never never take ten percent, right? Never take ten percent because there will be risk in the question. There will be changes in the question, right? Never take ten because changes will be there. Changes will be there. If it is like the third and fourth year, even fifth year. It's better you take something like 7%, 8%, sounds more realistic, right? So this is how you need to do it. Now, there is one more clarification, which I will be giving you over the next one hour or so. If there are certain adjustments, when we read the, we read the case, suppose we read the exhibit number two and exhibit number three, and there are certain numbers which needs to be adjusted from the profit of 145 million. Should you find a materiality on the basis of an adjusted profit or not an adjusted profit? Now, in an exam pressure, even if you find a materiality on the profit number given without adjustment, see, I just took a profit number 145 million and I didn't adjust it because I don't know what's happening in the exhibit number two and three. So I, exhibit two and three is hidden from me. So I just took my number 145 given in the financial statement and I worked on my materiality. Now, if there is any adjustment to be made in the profit number, which adjusts the profit number, my materiality would revise. But in the exam, you will be rewarded if you just took the unadjusted number and you concluded on the unadjusted number because uh, the conclusion on materiality, what is material and what is not material will not change even if you take the adjusted numbers as well in the exam paper. Right. So if, if, if you don't want to determine the materiality on the adjusted profit, that's not an issue. You can still go on the unadjusted profit. Your answer will not change accordingly. Yes, I'm just answering that question, Darshan. Now, when you start answering the significant risk, you will just be relating the risk with the level of materiality 10.15%. Any risk which is above 10.15 million would automatically become material and any risk which is under 10.15 million will become immaterial. I hope you're clear on that. So is everyone clear and sound? Should I proceed further? Is this something new for the upcoming exams, the materiality statement by the examiner in, in sorry.